now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this sun of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean, buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I that am not shaped for sport of trick, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me when I halt by them. Why? I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasure of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other, and if King Edward be as true and just as I am, subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy that says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here comes Clarence.